some things. Great, especially with the John, thanks so much for being here today. Of course. So I wanted to go back to the beginning for the first question. You and Patrick looked around, saw this big, established, fairly mature, not always efficient industry of payments, and decided we can make it better, just the two of us. Tell us about how you made that happen. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, th I think you need some, some amount of... Uh, naivete or, or youthful hubris uh, to be able to make such a, such a decision. But uh, if you rewind to the beginning, uh, I was 19, Patrick was 21 at the time, uh, and you can argue whether or not we had relevant experience. We, we didn't in the sense that we had not worked in finance or, uh, or, or payments or, or really any real job um, before that. Um, we, we did a very relevant experience in that we had started online businesses before. We, we had been the target customers for a service like Stripe. And the big trend I think we had noticed was, and it, it sounds funny to say this, but the finance industry just hadn't really adapted to the internet. It, 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 it's as if the internet had arrived and they had made no changes whatsoever. Uh, and so, if you wanted to start an online business, you were there filling in paper, paperwork, faxing things around, waiting weeks for your account to get set up, and, and they were evaluating it just like they would evaluate, uh, evaluate a, a brick and mortar business. They were using the same process for you know, giving loans to cafes and bakeries to setting up uh, credit card processing for an online business, which is, which is a totally different kettle of fish. Uh, and so we looked at this problem and we said, wait, uh, you know, as you mentioned in your introduction, there are all these, it's becoming increasingly easy to uh, launch an internet product and achieve significant scale with it, and yet we're still going through this 1970s banking infrastructure when it comes to running the actual business side of things. Uh, and that's what we started working on. We had no idea what the uh, total addressable market size was or, or, or anything like that. We knew that we would use this and you know, a few of our friends would use it and that seemed like uh, a total addressable market enough. Um, and, and sure enough, it, it has turned out that uh, this is something that a lot of people really want. And how do you quantify the total addressable market now? I, I think uh, there are estimates that there are about a trillion dollars in e-commerce last year um, in the U.S., that by 2020 there will be about six trillion dollars of e-commerce payments. What, what do you see as being the Stripe target? Yeah, I think those are good guiding numbers. So uh, you can start by looking at the uh, total e-commerce market, and if you talk to any business, large or small, about how they generally had to set up the, the payments and business side of things, they will, they will probably have horror stories about how difficult it, it was, um, especially the further back you go. And so we think uh, the e-commerce market could be much better served than it is today. And another important factor to realize is that the e-commerce market itself is, is growing really quickly. So when you invariably think about uh, an interesting technology company today, if you picture Lyft or Uber or Instacart or Airbnb or any of these, they're actually not competing with other e-commerce players. They're replacing spend that you previously would have made in the offline world. You know, before you would have taken a cab, now you take a Lyft, something like that. Um, and then lastly, uh, there are already many things beyond just the payments part of running the business, and we'll get to Atlas a little bit later, um, uh, but there are many things beyond just payments that people need for running an online business that we view as being within our, our market. Yeah, before we get into Atlas, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you've mentioned that you're passionate about other, other startups and products that are also making it easier for businesses to get off the ground. I think crowdfunding is a particular interest of mm -hmm. yours. Could you tell us a little bit about what you see these, um, what other companies you see as, as broadening the market for entrepreneurs? Yeah. Uh, so there's a general trend we're very excited by, which is the real decrease in the difficulty and uh, cost of starting a business. Uh, and we think this is a good thing for the world. Uh, anywhere that you have strong forces towards incumbency, uh, you, you generally have a slower rate of innovation and worse customer service. So you can picture you know, the airline industry where you have all this consolidation or, or telcos. I don't think anyone is particularly happy with the, the service they're getting from Verizon or Comcast. And I think a large part of why this is bad is because it's so hard to break into these industries. It's so hard for new entrants to come around. But in most industries, luckily, it's not true, and it's becoming easier for, for people to break 
break in. Uh, and so, obviously, we want Stripe to be a part of that trend where you have more and more new businesses getting started. I think the the whole wave of new hosting companies like DigitalOcean, Amazon Web Services, Heroku, uh, things like that, uh, have made it, you know, t 10 or 15 years ago, especially during the dot-com bubble, if you, if you go back and read, people were spending millions and millions of dollars on these setups just to be able to host an internet site and serve it to people. Uh, and now that is not an impediment for people. And then you get into new methods of, uh, of funding, which we think are pretty interesting. Um, you look at uh, projects uh, on Kickstarter or crowdfunding platforms like this, uh, and many of them uh, uh, tried to raise uh, venture capital money and couldn't. Uh, the venture capitalists told them they were crazy or this idea wouldn't work. And so these are quite possibly projects that would not have gotten off the ground, but now Kickstarter gives them a new way to raise capital for this business that's getting started. Similarly, we think uh, equity crowdfunding is pretty interesting, things like AngelList. All that's re really exciting because it allows new businesses that might not otherwise have existed to, to get off the ground. What was the hardest part of starting Stripe or getting it off the ground? A, a significant uh, and repeated source of challenges was the fact that we were trying to not just do a pure technology company, but uh, we were basically building a technology and a finance company. And uh, that is not actually something there are a lot of models that you can look up to for, for how to do. There aren't that many other companies in the space. And so it left us figuring out many things from first principles. But I think that's also, the, the fact we've been trying to figure that out all, all, all along the way has, has been what's led to a better customer experience with Stripe. The fact that Stripe basically owns the end-to-end -end of the experience. So rather than just saying this is a nice software layer that we put in front of all this cruft that we then make you, the customer, deal with, it's instead you sign up for a Stripe account, you know, you give us your details, and then you know, like the money arrives in your checking account uh, a few days later. That's a really valuable experience for people, but that was hugely hard to figure out along the way. I think it's, it's, pretty, um, it's been pretty widely mentioned that um, PayPal is really the last innovative, PayPal and Square are the last two innovative payments companies, mm -hmm. startups. Um, Peter Thiel, a pay, PayPal co-founder, invested in you guys. What, how much did you look at the PayPal experience as you were getting off the ground? Um, you know, pay PayPal was very influential uh, back in its day. Uh, back you know, when it started in the late 90s, early 2000s, there, there was really no online commerce, and, and they, did a, they were a very significant part of that shift towards getting people comfortable with, with paying on the internet. I think the thing that they're struggling today now with is that there is a secular shift away from the paying with PayPal behavior in terms of consumers' preferences. And so people don't want to, I think, go to a, a different website or a different app um, uh, to pay for something and then come back. That kind of dates from the era when you're almost afraid to pay on this random sketchy website, whereas now people are pretty comfortable using their credit card online. And so what we see as the uh, best-in-class experience today is you just enter your payment details once, it's saved in the app, and then you forget about it. And you know that's what Lyft, Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, I'll do. You enter your payment details once, and then you never have to think about it again. Uh, and, and then even things like uh, Apple Pay and Android Pay coming from Google, which make it even easier because you're not even entering in that payment data. Um, that's where we see the future going. And so I think that's the issue they're, they're struggling with now. And you work with Apple Pay and mm -hmm. uh, several other large tech, com tech companies, Facebook and Pinterest, I think, being among them. Mm -hmm. um, how did those partnerships come about, and what was, what was the tricky part or the fun part of getting them started? <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, the, the, the way they came about was that, say in the case of uh, Apple and Apple Pay, uh, Stripe is now powering a very significant number of apps in the App Store that are accepting credit card payments for all manner of things, from you know, selling stuff online to, uh, uh, to food delivery to transportation to everything like that. Uh, and Apple obviously wanted to make it easy for people to uh, integrate Apple Pay into their apps, and so it was kind of a natural fit for us to work together on that. And now a very significant fraction of the apps in the App Store that uh, are using Apple Pay for in-app purchases are, are powered by Stripe. So as a bit of a segue, I have to ask, what's more stressful, getting the call from Apple or getting the call from the White House? <laughs> um, uh, the, the call from the White House was, uh, was not actually 
the call itself was not stressful. I would say that the, the week that followed uh, was stressful. Um, uh, for, for context, um, uh, well, maybe do you want to explain the context or will I? Uh, sure. So, well, I'll, I'll let you introduce the product, but Stripe has a product that's about a month, and a, about a month old mm -hmm. called Atlas. Um, I referred to it in my introduction. It allows a, an entrepreneur outside the U.S. to apply for and pay a flat fee to do business in the U.S. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, Stripe opened it up in Cuba, and John's brother, Patrick, went, uh, went with President Obama to Cuba. Um, yeah, so uh, we launched this product, uh, Stripe Atlas, which is part of our general larger view of Stripe is to grow online commerce. And uh, one way we can do that is by making it easier for people to accept payments. But we had noticed that for many people in many countries, even before they got as far as payments, uh, just the very fact of opening the business was really difficult for them. So incorporating, getting access to banking, things like that. And so we launched Atlas, which uh, is a product that no matter where in the world you are, you can get access to US corporation, a US bank account, and things like that. Um, and so we launched it. We were very happy with the, with the response. We got applications from businesses in uh, 185 countries in the, the few days after the launch. So, I mean, more or less all of them. Uh, and I say more or less all of them because there are a few countries really that uh, a U.S. company can't do business with, uh, the ones that are embargoed or sanctioned by the U.S. Any applications from North Korea? Um, well, we block the, the <laughs> sanctioned countries. Uh, and uh, nice try. Um, <laughs> But, so we thought we're, you know, we thought we kind of tapped out the list of countries. Uh, it's hard to expand on that addressable market. Uh, but then uh, the the White House, uh, there's been this thaw in American-Cuban relations over the past maybe year or so, uh, and the White House got in touch in advance of uh, their trip to uh, to Cuba, uh, and they had been meeting uh, with uh, entrepreneurs in uh, Havana. Uh, and uh, one or two of them said, uh, you should check out this Atlas thing. Uh, it would make it really easy for us to launch businesses here. Uh, and so we got a call from, uh, from the White House saying, uh, would you guys be willing to launch this uh, Atlas thing in, in, in Cuba in a week and a half? Um, and you know, we said the only uh, logical response, which was, sure, why not? Uh, but just for context, you'd been working on Atlas, the product, for a year and a half? Before? We'd been, I mean, We've had the idea of Atlas for uh, a long, I mean, more or less since the start of Stripe. And it has always bugged us that we have to go country by country expanding Stripe in new places rather than being able to have it available globally. And then, yeah, Atlas itself, the product, had been in the works for a number of months. We had no idea this Cuba thing was coming when we launched it. Uh, and so we quickly had to, uh, to scramble to line up the various partners who we work with to make the Atlas product work. Um, uh, you know, for, for the past 50 years, US business has been predicated on, you know, you do not trade with Cuba. It's quite illegal and uh, 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 bad things happen if you do. Uh, and so we had to quickly go and reverse that because they, were, uh, they rolled back the Office of Foreign Asset Control sanctions that prevent people from trading in Cuba. Uh, and now uh, it's, it's quite okay and, and quite encouraged to do so. Uh, and so Patrick joined the, uh, the White House delegation to uh, Cuba, met with local uh, uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, and, and kind of technology enthusiasts there. Uh, and really, it's quite exciting in that it'll take a little bit of while to, for business to ramp up in Cuba. Uh, internet penetration uh, is very low there right now. But it's a country of 12 million people with a highly educated population. The Cuban government is doing this push towards expanding broadband access. I think long term, it'll actually be, be really exciting. Have you accepted any applications from Cubans so far? We've gotten a bunch of applications from Cubans, and we're in the process of getting the first one set up. And can you tell us more broadly how Atlas is going so far? So launched February 24th or so, I believe. Well, you have a better memory than I do. Um, yes. End of February. <laughs> so um, but maybe first to back up on, on why Atlas at all. Uh, we had noticed in, in, in the course of starting Stripe that uh, the internet has permeated uh, every corner of the globe, more or less, in this, in this very meaningful way. I mean, I, I personally feel this, where growing up in Ireland, uh, I was part of one local community, which was uh, you know, the one I was geographically in, but also growing up as a teenager with the internet, learning to code from it, you know, meeting various people in online forums. You have this separate global community that you get to be a part of, uh, and that's really something quite special. Uh, and so, for example, I don't think 
uh, I would be out here really if it hadn't been for the internet uh, growing up because that's what let me learn to code. That's what uh, in turn let Patrick and I to so starting our first business and then you know eventually moving out here and starting Stripe and things like that. And so it was a it was a significant part of uh, of my life. And it turns out that there are millions of other people uh, with with similar situations like this. Uh, who have gotten a huge amount of knowledge, gotten a, gotten a huge amount of value from the, from the internet. Those people in a lot of countries are by and large shut out of the online economy. And so they, you know, they might be participating in open source software development, they might be uh, learning things from various internet forums, but if they actually are now building a product and want to, w want to create value from it in their country, they, they more or less can't. And because the payment systems aren't there, because the banking systems aren't there, because the you know, corporate law uh, uh, is not there. And so our idea with Stripe was we had seen this behavior in the Stripe user, user base, people often virtually creating U.S. corporations to get to participate in the U.S. business climate, where they would fly out to the United States, pay $1,000 for airfares, $1,000 for legal fees, maybe eventually, if they were lucky, convince a bank to work with them, even though to a bank this is really scary, you know, foreigners in a, in a different country working on this internet idea thing we don't understand. Um, but, but, but there was this behavior, or honestly, more commonly, these people would just immigrate to the United States, and, the, and they would move here and start the business here. Uh, and we thought this was bad, because one, many more of these businesses would be getting started if it were, if it were easier. Uh, and two, people should not have to move to the United States to get a good business climate. They should be able to get a good business climate in their home countries. And so, for the longest time, again, like I said, since the start of Stripe, uh, this had been bugging us. Uh, the, the, the fact that this opportunity was very unequally distributed. Uh, and we eventually figured out that something like Atlas, we thought, would be possible. Um, and so we spent many months getting the right uh, partners on board. That was a significant part of it. We knew that we couldn't do this uh, ourselves because, I mean, frankly, we weren't going to go become a bank just to, you know, to give people access to the banking system. People complain, by the way, about the U.S. banking system. Compared to a lot of countries, we're, we're doing really well. Um, Good to know. And uh, similarly with other partners on the, on the tax side and finance. And so that, that's how we came to it. Um, in terms of how it's been going, like I said, the demand has been really strong. Uh, more or less businesses from every country have applied. Uh, and honestly, the big thing we are focused on now is trying to scale it, trying to get these businesses onboarded as quickly as we can, because there still are manual components and we're working with various partners on the back end, and we want to be able to support the, a very large volume of businesses going forward. And you, you mentioned some of the costs that people would have incurred previously in order to start their businesses here, whether coming to the country or flying here. Um, in contrast, you priced this whole deal at $500, I think, to start off. Um, it doesn't seem like Stripe's going to reap much ben business benefit from it in the short term. Uh, yes, I think in the short term is the very uh, salient detail there. So our idea with pricing it was, our, our intent was to more or less price it at cost, where there's lots of uh, Delaware filing fees and, and, uh, and things that we incur, and so uh, it's not our aim to make money off uh, the, the, the setup of the businesses themselves. We want to make it very easy for motivated, talented entrepreneurs to take advantage of this. We're deliberately making it $500 and not zero because we think I mean, there are real obligations you're incurring in incorporating a business in the United States. You know, there are tax obligations, legal obligations, things like that. And so we don't want to make it any simpler than it actually is, um, but we, it, it should be much simpler than it has been up to now. Uh, but, uh, so not making money off the incorporation, but we expect many of these businesses to become uh, large, successful businesses over time. If you, if you want an example of the sorts of uh, businesses people are creating with this, uh, check out a company called Instabug. They are uh, bug reporting and, and software development software. Uh, they're based out of Egypt. They're hiring people in, in, uh, in Egypt uh, to, to work on this. Uh, and it's used by lots of Silicon Valley tech companies. Um, and uh, they're the prototypical example of the kind of uh, company that we want to, want to support. Um, and, and that's actually for us the, uh, uh, the, the, the maybe the, the core thing behind Atlas is that this company in Egypt is not selling to uh, the local Egyptian market. Mm. Thanks to the internet, they're selling to the global market, uh, and that's the opportunity for people like that. They were just unlucky enough to be based in Egypt, where it was really hard to, to do so. Um, 
anyway, so uh, over time, we expect businesses like Instabug and, and, and thousands of other businesses to hopefully become large and successful, uh, and uh, Stripe will make money on them in, in lots of other ways. But this is not a, uh, a, a charitable thing for us. We expect this to be a significant source of business over time. Uh, I could continue asking John questions, but I want to open it up to the audience. So I believe there are mics. Um, if you've got a question for John, could you raise your hand? And I can't actually see very well. Um. Hi. So I am starting a nonprofit that is going to um, bring resources to Uganda, southern Uganda, right? And so. What we were planning to do, we are, we'll have an internet site um, that people can donate. It's actually going to be pigs for, to start micro, bi micro businesses for poor women in Uganda. So we'll have an internet site um, where people will donate in U.S. dollars, and then we need to get this money to Uganda. And what we believe we're going to do, our plan now is to um, collect the money in U.S. dollars, have an account in Uganda in U.S. dollars, um, and PayPal the money there, so we only have to ex pay the exchange rate you know, once, and the smaller exchange rate in Uganda, and not like wiring fees. Does that make sense to you? And does could, would Stripe have uh, an advantage for us? Uh, so, if I understand your uh, question correctly, you're looking to. Uh, raise money in the U.S. and get the money to U Uganda and be paying out many people locally. Uh, Stripe can certainly help you with the uh, collection side in the U.S. Uh, we do not support paying out money in uh, Uganda uh, yet. Uh, I really would like us to be able to, and I think we'll eventually get there, but probably not that soon. Uh, and so you can use Stripe for the collecting money in the U.S. part, but uh, in terms of getting the money to Uganda and paying it out locally, um, that sadly, uh, your plan sounds, sounds pretty reasonable to me. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use Stripe for that today. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see a question down here. Hi there, uh, my name is Shelby Burford, and I do uh, marketing communications work uh, for people helping with value propositions um, and that kind of thing. And one of the, the ways that I've been looking to pivot my own work is helping companies that are looking, helping people who are looking to do business in the US communicate the value of their products and services to the American market. And when you're talking about Atlas, I was curious, have you seen um, a need for that? Or what are the other needs you've seen when you're equipping people with a toolkit to here, come do business with America, what are their other issues and areas of need? Um, I think it's entirely dependent on the category or sort of business that uh, you're offering. And so if you're offering uh, tax prep software, that's probably going to be pr pretty different based on the market that you're selling into, uh, and you're going, to need to, you're going to need to do a lot of work to uh, localize it for, say, the United States market. Something like uh, Instabug that I, that I mentioned earlier, uh, that is actually a pretty similar software tool, regardless of where you happen to be based. They're selling to a, you know, the software developer market, which is pretty similar across a lot of countries. And this gets to a, a core question that we had in developing Atlas, which is, are businesses, by their nature, sort of regional or different based on national boundaries, or are most products uh, and most businesses f fairly international by their nature and, and applicable to a broad range of people across a broad range of countries, and is it just artificial national borders that are, that, that are keeping them uh, contained? And our belief, and Atlas is sort of a bet on the, the latter statement, that there are plenty of businesses and plenty of products out there in the world that would do really well internationally if they could just trade internationally and sell internationally. Uh, and that's our idea with Atlas, that you should, when you go to buy products and services, you may well be buying from a company in Egypt or in Guatemala or in India, uh, and they will be able to serve you, they will be able to develop a better product than maybe someone in the US is developing. It's, it's an open question, but, but it's one we feel pretty good about. I've got to follow up on that. Yeah. In the U.S. especially, how much of a developer do you need to be or how much of a developer does your company need to have in order to figure out Stripe? Um, so the product itself is an API. 
uh, and you are generally integrating it with uh, an app or a website or something like that. But I would say, people, some people say Stripe sells to developers, and that's sort of true, but really we sell a technology product to, to tech companies. And in our experience, the buyer can be the developer, the de buyer can be the product manager, the de buyer can be the CFO, anyone like that really. You don't have to be a developer to understand the value and, and the importance of it. Generally, the people we're selling to are developing uh, a website anyway, or they're developing an app anyway, and so Stripe gives them the few lines of code that they need to integrate payments mm. into their app or service, but if they've gone as, as far as developing that app or website, they're not gonna have any trouble with Stripe. Okay. Uh, next question. Hi, my name's Paul Freed, and I own an executive search firm here in Seattle, but I wanted to ask you, John, about Cuba, because I was in Cuba last week with a delegation of CEOs as part of the entrepreneur organization, that's here in town, and I was wanting to know what will your Atlas app enable entrepreneurs to do there? And you got a chance to talk with some of them. Like, what can they do now with your app? And how was the government working with you on some of the taxation and legalities of what people can do or not? Sure. So the core Atlas product, just to be explicit, is uh, it allows people to incorporate a U.S. business. It allows people to uh, open a U.S. bank account. Uh, to, to receive the, the funds. Uh, it, allow, it gives people tax and legal advice in setting up that business, and then uh, gives them a Stripe account for accepting payments. Uh, and so that's something that we think will be very useful to people uh, broadly. In Cuba, we were forbidden from offering that service, like I said, by these Office of Foreign Asset Control regulations until uh, a few weeks ago when they were, they were overturned. Um, and so now, uh, in Cuba, we can offer that set of services that I just mentioned to Cuban entrepreneurs. The difference with the Cuban market is it will take more time, we think, for it to ramp up because, say, internet penetration is, is very low right now compared to a lot of other countries. We're confident that it will ramp up over time, uh, but the, the adoption curve will be a little different. See one down here? Yeah, I think this will have to be our last question, unfortunately. Um, my name is Jalen, and uh, I've used Stripe for a number of years, so thank you. I've used it on different retail platforms. I have an online accessories company, and um, I recently set up my wholesale store with Stripe through Squarespace. Um, I had been using PayPal, and something that is happening more and more are companies like mine that are really small are asking our retailers to shop online, pay up front, and then they ship merchandise. So the only problem with that is even though we get money up front, the commission is not always good. So if it's a big order, the commission that comes out of it is a lot. Um, I'm just wondering if that's something, as that market grows, you're considering developing for wholesalers. Uh, are, are, we cons uh, are we considering developing a product specifically for wholesalers? Yes. Uh, I don't know if we'll plan on specifically developing a product for the uh, wholesale uh, market, but in general, we do want Stripe to be a pretty broad solution. The idea is we put the infrastructure out there and you can use it in a retail setting with something like, um, you know, an e-commerce setting with something like Squarespace. You can use it in a mobile commerce setting. You can use it for a software as a service business. You can combine the Lego bricks in, in whatever way you see fit. Uh, one thing that we think will actually be pretty relevant for the business to business side of the market and, and, and maybe the, the wholesale situation you're describing is uh, we launched uh, ACH payments a while ago. And so this fits nicely with the, the general Stripe thesis, which is, uh, taking all this infrastructure that previously has existed for a long time was previously very hard to work with, and the kind of the banks acted as really gatekeepers uh, uh, that kept a lot of people out of this, and making it broadly accessible to everyone. And so uh, the ACH network is a slower but significantly lower cost alternative to the credit card networks. It takes a few days for transactions to clear, but um, it's, it's obviously much, much cheaper. Uh, and so again, this was something that beforehand, maybe if you went through a bunch of hoops, you could get through your bank. Now you can just sign up for it on the Stripe website. And so it's possible that if you're doing very large transactions in a business-to-business -business context, like a, a retail wholesale environment, uh, maybe ACH would, would work pretty well. Great. Well, I'm sorry we don't have any more time, but John, thank you so much. This has been wonderful to have you here today. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you.